Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here and I wanted to pop on and talk about some of the biggest tips when you are, you know, kind of going off track of your meal plan, right? Um, so these are things that I chat about with women in my 12 week program. For those of you that are doing, you know, New Year's resolutions or if you've got a big goal that you're trying to strive for, you're really going for it, awesome. Things always seem to happen though. I mean, it just, it is what it is, right? It's life. I am a realist when it comes to staying on track. I just am and I, I always promote that for people because I don't expect you to be perfect. I'm not perfect and unless you're really like, I'm gonna be on a magazine cover, you don't need to be perfect, right? Do what's best for you in your lifestyle. That's what's gonna get you maintaining the best results long term. I could oh talk about however many studies <laughs> we need to talk about um, that shows proof of all of this stuff. But overall, just having and you know people say 80/20 or 90/10 or whatever it is, staying on track overall really is the best policy. So building in some of that wiggle room is great, but also sometimes even if you don't build in wiggle room, right? Sometimes life just happens. I have had so many times where I've meal prepped something and I go to pull my lunch out of the fridge the next day and my husband took it with him to work. So he ate my lunch. Uh, all of a sudden protein balls will magically disappear. I made um, muffins for seed cycling and they are all gone less than 24 hours later. Great. I mean, so great that my family is eating healthy, right? <laughs> and likes what I make. Awesome. Such a bad problem to have, right? It's a good problem to have, right? But it, it can be frustrating, especially when things just happen and you're like, okay, I'm either on the go, something came up, so-and-so is in the hospital, I didn't get to meal prep. What do I do? Where do I go? How do I be prepared for this so I stay on track as much as possible? That way I don't feel guilty and I also don't feel like garbage going off track. So I'm going to talk about these things today. And these are things that I guide women through in the 12 week program. This is why I have a program that is built specifically for women, their bodies, their hormones, protein pacing, carb cycling, intermittent fasting, all for women, what women's bodies need and nutrition that matches your hormones and cycle, which is literally a one of a kind thing out there. Nothing else out there is like it. Um, based on my book, The Female Fat Solution, which is on Amazon, it is an international bestseller, um, number one new release. And I, I get so I get messages from women all over the world um, after they read this book and are like, oh my gosh, this is eye opening for me. Um, so and I have a podcast, the Female Health Solution, um, YouTube, uh, Dr. Beth Westy on YouTube, where you can check out all my archived videos. And then I do have twelve week programs where I work with women with fertility, um, other cycle hormone issues, weight loss issues, and menopause, perimenopause issues as well. So I'll put a link below. If you have, um, Jennifer, sorry, I missed the Zoom tonight, next week. Yes, next, next week. You'll get a recording of it though, Jennifer. Um, if you have questions, I'm gonna put a link below this video where you can schedule a call with me one-on-one. -on -one. That way, if whatever it is that you're struggling with, I can help you navigate that. And these, so these are some of the things that we chat about and I wanted to kind of open this up and really show you guys what this is about and how to really navigate through these things because sometimes it's just the little things like this that make the biggest difference overall. Honestly, seriously. So when it comes to staying on track, the biggest things that you need to know and understand and just kind of adopt as a mindset is really just do your best. Like there are things that happen. I have, you know, had meetings run late. I have, you know, b been at like practice or football or something and it runs late. And, and um, I, you know, travel for football sometimes. And oh my gosh, I will bring my food with me in a cooler, all of these things. But still sometimes, you know what? Like I, I remember going to a football game and I had like my meals, my snacks and everything planned and prepared my cooler, all this other stuff. Uh, a teammate of mine got really, really um, uh, car sick, motion sick on the way there and she needed extra food before the game and I was one of the only people who, I'm the crazy one that brings like my cooler of all my like prepped food, right? And I'm like helping her with food. I was like, this is gluten-free, dairy-free, this and she's like, don't you have just normal food? I'm like, it's normal, it's normal food. Mm, it's regular food, you know. But, <laughs> but I had to alter my snacks and my, my meals then to make sure that I still had enough for myself because I, you know, shared with her. Again, not a big deal, but overall I'm thinking in the back of my head, okay, if for some reason, like if the bus gets a flat tire, I might be really hangry <laughs> because I'm not going to eat a sandwich from a gas station, you know, that type of thing. Um, so what do you do when you are 
So of course, doing your best, but what do you do when you fall behind? So here are the tips and tricks that I have done myself and that I've actually learned from a lot of other people throughout the thousands of women that I've worked with. Um, some of these things are not my ideas, right? I, I pick them up from other people. So, so I'm sharing them with you because I believe that the more women um, have, the more knowledge you have, the more you know, the better you can do, right? So these are my fallbacks and I use them all the time when I need, right? Of course, I plan for the best or hope for the best, but plan for the worst, right? Um, but overall, every day you're just doing your best with your nutrition overall, you know? And, and sometimes it's better than others, but again, still, still give it a go. So frozen fallbacks. Isn't that nice? That's a nice ring to it. Um, I almost want to make an entire like cookbook ish of all these things because <laughs> it's so helpful it's so helpful most of the time I do you know me or my husband um, you know we prep and make meals from scratch all that stuff um, you know we had a pork and potatoes and veggies tonight like very simple very clean right you know but sometimes it just it just happens where I'm like oh my gosh I totally forgot about this kids band concert or something yes that's happened um, <laughs> where, where I'm like, we have to eat in 15 minutes and then go. Mm. So having a frozen fallback, that means like some type of prepped meal, something is already cooked and I can literally just, you know, it's in a container. I can throw it in the microwave, you know, or throw a glass container or baking dish or something in the oven and go. Right. Um, you know, I use, I have an instant pot, which I use a lot. I love it. I have a grill that I use all the time, like a little George Foreman grill. It's actually kind of a big George Foreman, but I, I use it all the time. Again, it cooks things really quickly, a healthy clean, all that stuff. But having prepped meals, something prepped that's already cooked, even if it's already packaged, like you buy it cooked, you buy a pre-cooked meal. If it's a healthy, clean option, I rather you do that. You know what I mean? I rather you get the nutrient in and get the protein in than not. You know what I mean? I mean, sometimes your best option is making a sandwich, but again, uh, for, you know, if you've got a family and stuff, or you just want to eat a hot meal, you want to eat something warm. Absolutely. Take something and heat it up. Right. And so I had somebody ask me like, what do you think about like, um, pre-made egg cups or things like that? And I was like, you know what, if you can make egg cups, awesome. But if you know, like I know I've seen, I saw them at Costco, they have, I love Costco. I'm not sponsored by Costco. I'm just gonna put that out there yet. But I love Costco because they have so many convenient foods that you can have on hand. Egg cups, they have, I mean, yes, you can make them, you can freeze them, you can, you know, reuse them, all that stuff. And the, but you can also buy them. Is it the absolute best to buy them? No, the absolute best is to make it fresh, go out to your chicken coop, get the eggs yourself, make it yourself right away, right? If you don't have that option, you go to the store and buy the eggs, right? Right? You just, you know, but still it's good. But of course, if you can't do that, I'd rather you get the protein in in the morning than get nothing at all. Next thing, um, you know, besides frozen fallbacks, a grocery dash. I have done this. We did this. When did we do this? We did this on Sunday, right? You're thinking like Sunday, aren't you meal prepped and everything on Sunday? Not this past Sunday. Nope. Nope. I had stuff going all day and then the kids. My, so we had a nanny um, when I had my office. I love her. Love, love, love her. And my kids babysit her kids now, which is adorable. Hi, Kate. <laughs> um, look what we're talking about. Um, and so it just so happened that the schedule with everything, I was like, oh my God, they're going to be home. They're going to be hungry. And we don't have, I don't have food for them. They're going to be home in like 10 minutes and they're going to want food. And then I'm going to have to put them to bed. And if I like, it's going to get ugly. So we literally, me and my husband, we literally <laughs> ran to the grocery store and did this, a grocery store dash. We got a, a rotisserie chicken. We got salad and I got some gluten-free bread to heat up, you know, in the, in the oven. So within minutes we had a meal for them. Yes, it was, you know, so sometimes just going to the grocery store, going to the buffet, like at Whole Foods or something like that. You know, you're getting something in. Can you do fast? Can you do like food on the go? Can you do Chipotle? Absolutely. But again, the more you can get it fresh, not fast food, the better. So that's what these options are, right? It's going to really help you stay on track that much better. Um, pantry pickups. I always have stuff extra stored in my pantry. Um, that's, that's a great you know, alternative as well, besides frozen food. Sometimes if I'm, you know, on the go or trying to piece things together for lunch, something like that, 
Um, tuna fish is sort of my go-to for that. I'll have like a pouch of tuna fish. You know, if I've got guacamole or an avocado, I'll mix it in with that. Um, sometimes I'll mix it in with cottage cheese or salsa even, and I'll just eat it with, you know, whatever else, whatever carb I need to eat it with. Sometimes if I make um, extra, you know, potatoes or something like that, I'll, I'll eat it with that. If I, my, one of my favorite meal prep things to have in the fridge is I make quinoa, ground turkey, and greens, sauteed greens, and I just keep it in a tup tub, Tupperware or something in the fridge, and then I can make eggs with that. I can mix it with any other, you know, chicken I have left over or anything else, and, uh, and I can also eat it just as a meal because it's like ground turkey and quinoa and greens. Super, super easy. Um, Kate, you're gonna try tuna and avocado for lunch tomorrow. Yes, super good, super, super good. But having little things like tuna fish on hand, because again, that's one of the hardest nutrients to get in is protein, and get it in consistently to protein paste throughout the day. So protein shakes, bars, clean ones, of course, mm, clean ones are always great to have on hand. But for food food, sometimes if you're like, I, I, I just had a bar, I just had a shake, I need to eat a meal now, this is, this is a go-to. And then the remix, that's what I call this. My husband does not eat leftovers. He doesn't like them. He'll tell you different. He'll tell you different. I'm going to have him on a video here pretty soon in, in the next week or so. And he's going to swear up and down that he will eat leftovers. He does not eat the leftovers. No, he doesn't. You know what I have to do with the leftovers? I remix it. I will take whatever it is for a leftover, add some cheese and put it back in the oven or put it in the microwave. Biggest sneaky trick ever. I do this with pasta. So when we make pasta, we'll have a ton of leftover pasta and sauce, right? And I will take it and I'll put it in a Tupperware, or put it in a, you know, Ziploc or something, put it in the fridge. And then a couple days later, something like that, I will take it out, you know, mix it all together. And, um, you know, pastas that I have, you know, sometimes I'll use like a quinoa pasta, um, there's a really good lentil pasta that's got higher protein in it. So and then I use meat sauce and stuff So it's higher in protein all that good stuff and I use greens in there as well to up the you know micronutrient in there a little key there and um, <laughs> I mix in either cottage cheese In it and then I like top it with cheese and I pop it in the oven for 30 minutes. Oh my gosh It's like a lasagna bake kind of thing and he thinks it's like the best thing ever and all I did was remake leftovers Seriously, seriously, add cheese or some cottage cheese. Mix it all together, whatever it is, right? Make it into a goulash, something. That's what my mom called stuff, goulash, right? We were talking about this, Kate. Just, you know, I, don't, I, th I think she like makes up words sometimes. She'd be like, oh, it's German. It's a German word. And I'd be like, mom, I think you're making it up. Goulash. Sounds like something she would make up. But I hear it's a real word, so whatever. But so I make a goulash dish, whatever I kind of have around leftover in the fridge, put it together, and I honestly add cheese, put it in the oven. Sometimes I'll put some more seasoning on it or something like that, and it's like delicious. Oh, so delicious. And then everybody eats it. Everybody eats it. I have made remixed dishes that are not great, right? That's fine. That's fine, right? Goulash. It's real. It's a thing. Yes. Yeah. My secret though to making it delicious is the cheese. That's the secret. I mix in cottage cheese and then I put cheese on top. It's more protein. It's adding more protein. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've also tried it with some Greek yogurt. I've had some success and some failures with that. I'll be totally honest. Um, yeah, but these are just, again, this is quick and easy. I mean, I have, I have even taken like quinoa and then leftover, um, or like I have some like a turkey deli meat in the fridge and then just some leftover veggies. You know, it was like some frozen veggies that I had made and I put in the fridge cause I just couldn't, I was like, oh, there's so many leftover veggies. Oh my God. Cause I was expecting somebody for dinner and they didn't come and I was like, this is so random, but I'm going to do it. And it was actually really good. Yeah. Right. Cheese makes everything better. <laughs> Cheese does make everything better. But it was funny. I was like, okay, I'm just chopping up little pieces of turkey, deli meat. I've got this quinoa. I've got these frozen veggies. Cottage cheese mixed in. I put some Italian um, herbs in there, and then I topped it with cheese, baked it. Right? Just, just kind of whatever, throwing it in. But again, that's, you know, making sure I'm getting enough protein with that. Um, making sure that I am getting enough sustenance for myself and my family, and it's, it's quick on the go, and I'm cleaning out the fridge. 
you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, just creative ways to keep on track, creative ways to keep going. Because when you meal prep and meal, you know, plan everything, sometimes stuff comes up and say you, you have a day that you're planning on doing it and you just don't get it done or it doesn't happen, that's fine, right? So you gotta fill in the gap somehow. Or you get really busy or you get bored, right? You get bored with the same things all the time. Molly, less waste, yes, right? Yeah, you're reusing it. Um, that's a staple for me, turkey, deli meat, and veggies. Yeah, right? Make it exciting, spice it up a little bit, yeah. Um, but that's the thing, like, some, that I, I do meal prep sometimes, but I don't do it a ton, not as much as like other, you know, health people online. And it's honestly because my stuff gets eaten and I get mad about it. <laughs> yes. But I will do, here's what I will do. If I'm making chicken or something the night, like one night, so what's today? Today's Wednesday. So we had pork tonight, right? And if there's, you know, sometimes I will plan and make extra pork to have the next day for lunch for myself or whatever I need, right? Or for two days later, you know, and, and I, but I make it into a different dish again. So I'm not eating the same things all over again and I'm not getting bored. Um, because again, that's the, this is the lifestyle part of it. It's really tough to stay on track if you're not happy with it and if it's not exciting. So having stuff that's frozen, frozen fallbacks, doing a grocery dash, which I'm going to do a grocery dash for Costco and I'm going to do one for my local grocery stores, um, talking about eating warming and cooling foods and how easy it is to pick warming and cooling foods when you're doing a grocery dash. I'll show you guys that. Pantry pickups, just simple things to have. Again, my, my staple for that is just tuna fish. I don't do a lot of canned foods, things like that. The only thing I regularly do is in the fall, I get canned pumpkin because I've never hollowed out a pumpkin and used it. Like I make squash and you know, that stuff. But I've never hollowed out a pumpkin and made a pie with it. But I do make protein pumpkin pie. I make protein pumpkin smoothies protein pumpkin muffins, all the protein pumpkin things. If it's pumpkin, it comes with protein and it do that, but I get that from a can. Other than that, I remix stuff all the time, all the time. That's one of my big go-tos. If I make a big thing of quinoa, I make a big thing of rice even. Um, we'll have regular rice one night. I'll make pesto rice and add in other things, you know, hide it all in there, just throw it all in there. Make a one pot meal, one skillet meal. That's sort of my, those are sort of my go-tos. So, all right. That's what I got for you guys tonight. Again, I know some people have like perfect meal plans, perfect everything, but if it's not perfect, you just do your best. That's what's gonna keep you on track. So, these are things that we talk about in the 12 week program that I have. Sometimes women are intimidated and be like, oh my gosh, this is, it is more intense. It is, you know, something that, you know, you have to put in for because um, <laughs> it, it's, it's not just a simple, right, oh, do this one meal a day. It does have everything laid out for you, but it does get amazing, incredible results. Um, it's, it's a completely different, you know, experience to go through when you're following nutrition for your hormones and cycle. So I'm going to put a link below. You can, you know, click the link. We can have a chat. You know, we can schedule a call. You can schedule a call with me. We can have a chat about whatever you're struggling with and getting towards your goals. Kate, you're asking, what's the definition of a grocery dash? Oh, that's you going yourself. I mean, if you order your online and you get your groceries delivered, cool. But this is like, oh crap, I have, I have to feed the kids or myself and I've got 10 minutes and I don't have food in the house. I have to run to the store and get it. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> I know. Sometimes when I talk to people, they're like surprised that I like sometimes have to fill in the gaps like this. I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a realist. Like, I'm not perfect. You know, by no means. I know. And I still, I mean, you know, we do, you know, meal prep. I do cook a lot of regular meals. Like, we have tacos all the time. We make chicken curry all the time. The chicken curry comes from Costco, right? Like, I will show you all of my Costco meals. I'm going to make an entire Instagram stories highlight reel of all my Costco meals. And just call it Costco meals. And I'm going to call it warming and cooling grocery dash things, too. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, for the grocery dash. Um, yeah. So that's just picking up that like a rotisserie chicken, a salad from a bag and then like a gluten-free, they have these, um, this is like the only time I buy them gluten-free, uh, like bag, uh, baguette things. They look, they're like longer bread things that I can pop in the toaster oven. It's literally the most cooking I do then as I pop the toast in the 
toaster oven and I put ghee on it. <laughs> Carb, protein, greens, and healthy fats. <laughs> yeah, super fast and easy. So, all right, that's what I got for you guys tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And um, yeah, I'll put that link below. Otherwise, again, these are things where you don't have to be perfect. Do your best. And things really do start moving towards a positive direction for your goals as long as you keep sticking with it as best you can. All right. Have a great night.